And I was just talking to you, and this is your first time coming over to um, Coffee Moaning. This is Mark. You'll probably have seen on my Instagram, to be fair. Yeah, especially clearing paint off the patio. But you might not know that we do this every day. We mm. do coffee moaning every day. I can't get any nearer. It's like literally you don't want me in the shop. I do. <laughs> Sorry. Um. Um, yeah, so we do coffee moaning every day. And, and I was just saying over on Instagram, guys, we've decided to not talk about Ukraine today because lots of you have been messaging saying you're just so anxious about it. So we thought, let's have a half hour yeah. where we talk about other things. Of course, we're always all engaged and plugged into what's going on. And, oh God, our hearts break at minute by minute. But I think also we need to be able to just sometimes step away from it. Yeah, and can I just say that in so doing, it doesn't mean we're making light, nor no, any of the things God, that we're no. talking about take priority. I think it's really important that people don't feel guilty about mm. wanting to turn their attention away from it for periods of time. I think there's a, a duty and responsibility to kind of be aware and, and, and have some knowledge, but I understand that it just makes people feel incredibly anxious. So. And you did a great live yesterday explaining yeah. everything that's going on. If you missed yesterday's and you do want to know, I haven't watched it yet, but lots of people have said to me, Mark did a great job yesterday really going through actually... Just unpacking well, some of the unpacking terms. Unpacking some of the terminology um, well, and stuff. So yeah. that's still up. All, everything is always uploaded. All our lives are uploaded right. so you can catch that. So good morning, good morning, everybody. Yes. How are you all? Can I ask, do you still get blind spots? Because I've got a terrible one there. So Mark, who's a hypochondriac, a couple of days ago, you went into, have I got cancer? And me and Maddie went, no, you've got a blind spot. Leave it. Only because it's so hard. Leave it. It's it's a spot. So I tried to squeeze it. Happy World Book Day, parents. Laura Luke. Yeah, Happy, happy World Book Day. Um, I've come as Harry Potter. <laughs> um, so yeah, do you get blind spots? It's awful. You know, Andy Warhol said there's one spot that just keeps coming up everywhere on the body. Yeah. Oh, does he? Oh, Sarah Fox's dad. Here it is. 89. Oh, 89. Today. Happy birthday, Sarah Fox's dad. Yeah, we remember what is going on in the world, but we will celebrate. Of course, of course. You know, life goes on. Babies are being born. People have to get to work. Operations are happening. Mm. Tell us your dad's name so we can sing him happy birthday. Mm. If it's anyone's birthday today, tell us so we can sing to you. Mark and Nadia, have you seen... In fact, we have seen the new book by Sir Ken Robinson. I'm, I'm in touch with his daughter. And so, um, yeah, yet more wisdom. Yet more wisdom. If you don't know who Ken Robinson is, check out his... Um, TED Talks. TED Talks, uh, Schools Kill Creativity. He's so brilliant. It's really odd. When he first starts, you think, oh, what's this? But, oh, my God, I don't know anyone that's watched that that didn't no, love it. No, exactly. Uh, Joshua Duncan says, leave it alone, Mark, it will disappear soon. Thank it's you. It's just been getting bigger and bigger, though. Oh, Vincent, I love that name. 89 today, one, two, three. You happy can all sing at home. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Vincent. Happy birthday to you. 89, that's amazing. And Sharon's, oh my God, Nan's 96th. Jean, she's a Glaswegian. Happy birthday to, to you. you. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Happy birthday, dear Jean. 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 Oh, sorry, Jean. Jean. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday to, to you. you. There you go. Yeah, so suffice it to say, the Ukraine, just quickly, just a gesture towards it. The Ukraine-Russian, uh, you know, conflict is, is progressing. The Russians, sadly, are taking more land in the south. But Kiev is still holding out. Um, there were more peace talks yesterday, but I heard yeah. nothing about them. And yeah. China behind the scenes is trying, is, is bizarrely sort of, try, I think, trying to broker well, some Well, the Ukrainian kind of uh, foreign minister reached out to the Chinese foreign minister and they have agreed to try and help facilitate peace yeah. talks, which yeah. is good news. So yeah. we'll just stick with that today and move away from Ukraine for the rest of the chat. Uh, Louise Birchall, I'm so pleased. Selfish Giant was one of my favourite films, or is I one of my favourite film. films. It's so good. And yeah, if you haven't, uh, Ali and Ava, we saw a preview of it. Our review went up. It's out this Friday. So if you don't oh, fancy to Batman, it. if you're kind of not superhero oriented, 
Uh, please check out Ali and Ava. It's uh, it's an. A Would quiet... you see it again? Because I really wanted to see that. I was disappointed you oh, saw that without me. You should. Well, there's a pre there's a preview screening. You should go with. Um, yeah, you should go with the girls. I think they'll like it too. It's really good. Do you think Lisa would like it? Uh, would, uh, she I might. don't know. Some Bit of the of films would like, yeah, maybe. Yeah. Um, Emma Carter, I look like I've been tangoed, put a foundation sample on to see what it was like, and I now look orange. So we're just imagining Emma sitting, looking like looking an orange. Looking bright orange. Do you remember that? You've been tangoed. The guy used to run yeah. out. It was so funny. I used to like that. Um, Based a chicken mark, funniest ever, need a laugh, Susan Cooper. I, I do need to get back in the kitchen and do we something We were saying ridiculous. that this morning that we're going to do a cook. Yeah. Maybe we'll do it on the... Yeah, but we'll see. Um, I look like I've been... Oh, sorry, we've had that. Doesn't um, the trailer look good for Bullet Train? Yeah, doesn't it? We did a review of so. the trailer of Bullet Train. It's the new um, uh, Brad Pitt film. Yeah. Oh, my God, it looks so good. Russ Souch, I've just started, started watching Oz Art. Can't believe it's taken this long. This is like What's a wrong with you? Chat. Yeah, but he's there. He's there now. Russ! And yes, Faith Goodman, I did hear that, sadly, with Channel 5's decommissioning of Neighbours, Neighbours has come to a halt. Oh, don't. My friend Tom Sage is devastated. After 37 years, I believe it is. Uh, we used to watch it at college all the time. Um, yeah, quite something. The end of Neighbours. That's it. They couldn't find a broadcaster to pick it up. So that's done. Uh, Catherine Klaus and chemists here in Denmark Thank you, sold Kirsty. out of... I'll try that. Chemists here in Denmark sold out of iodine tablets in case of radiation if Putin drops a nuclear bomb. Christ. I oh, know. Mark, was, Mark yeah. was reading about that last night. God yeah. almighty. Yeah. So there you go. That's so, where we are. Yeah. Now... Today. Oh, I saw the Duke yesterday. It was brilliant, was it, Emily? Oh, we want to see that. Yeah, we do. I want to see that. We do, we do. Now, I was staggered to discover that we are one year on since the Sarah Everard tragedy. Um, and, uh, you know, some of the press are asking the question, have things progressed in any meaningful way? Just something that uh, I think someone drew my attention to. Um, I think it might be Ella. Um, Apparently, behind the scenes, whilst everything's going on, they've removed the clause that um, misogyny can be a crime. Really? They've dropped it from... Why? The, well, I don't know. They're kind of... I don't know. I don't know why. They just have. Um, but that, that the idea that, you know, we must keep an, a, a keen eye on what sort of rules and laws and all mm. this kind of stuff are going on behind the scenes. Well, behind the drama of the pandemic exactly. and now, now the, the war. war. Yeah. You know, that's when governments get really sneaky and start... Slipping things through. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Who was your favourite character? Sorry, people are just talking about uh, Neighbours for a minute there. Who was your favourite character in Neighbours? I, I had a period of time where I really loved Neighbours and I was absolutely thrilled by the Kylie and oh, Jason, Jason Donovan. Donovan. I yeah. loved Jason. Yeah. I fancied Jason Donovan. So funny because, of course, I've interviewed him loads mm. since then and now he's just like a, a middle-aged man like me. Like I used to like Harold. Man. It's like Harold. Um, Do you remember Harold? But I did love their love story. And I worked with, um, was it Madge, the redhead with the really yes. uh, croaky voice? Yes. We did a play together. Henry. Was she it was Henry? lovely. I thought it was Harold. Harold, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yes, yeah, sorry. And going... I worked with the really, the blonde guy with the curly hair, the really good looking, like, oh, yeah, so macho. Server. Well, I worked with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they were all lovely, actually. Anyone I've ever met from Neighbours is lovely. Of course it's... But, I mean, I remember that wedding. I mean, how many... What were the numbers on Watch That Wedding? It was something insane. Oh, yeah, like, no, it was ludicrous. Back in the day. Millions of Madge millions. and Harold, that's right, that's right. Um, Madge and Harold. Okay. Harold used to annoy me. Yeah. Did he? I quite liked him. He was a bit silly. Anyway, sorry. Uh, came off a very important but subject. But we should... It's a good subject. Yeah, we'll come My back to it. My Neighbours is a good subject. We'll come back to it. But yeah, so were you shocked and surprised to hear that it was a year since Sarah Everard? I really... I can't believe it's a year ago. Mm. And, I mean, yeah. I certainly don't feel any safer. Nothing has changed for me or for my worry for our girls. Or what about you? I mean, yeah. why would we feel... I mean, I was talking to somebody yesterday who's uh, a friend of her... Well, her best friend, who had been a victim of domestic violence. Yeah. And um, this lovely chap had beaten up his girlfriend in a horrific way. He'd also, previous to that, beaten up various girlfriends of oh his. Oh, God. He got a six-month sentence and she's had to move away and move away from her life and everything and lives in, you know, has to, she hasn't been able to tell any of her friends where she lives because she's that in danger. God. 
you know, and we are still talking about how women, what women have to do about violent women. Women mustn't walk at night. Yeah. We must put more um, lights up. We need to have we need to have apps on our phone that tell people where we are. Hang on a minute. Take for instance this guy I've just mentioned. I want him. I want an app so I can track and see who are the people that have just been let out of bloody prison for doing what. So why do we have to be mm. watched? Well, I think people are saying that it's like you know it's all well and good putting more lights out and CCTV and all that, but what where's that where's mean? the educating and, tra and yeah. change of men's behaviour? And I if mean... misogyny is being slipped through as now not a crime when yeah. it's actually the root of all evil yeah. against women, then that's a real problem, isn't it? Yeah, Myra, we'll sing you happy birthday at the end, sweetheart. Um, yeah, no, I agree. Happy birthday for now, though. Yeah. I think the vast majority of people don't feel it's changed. Uh, Nicola Randall, nothing's changed for me around my heightened awareness of my personal safety. Oh my God, look at that. Mum of girls, my eldest daughter has just learned to drive and it petrifies me if she is stopped by police. She is too trusting of oh people. Oh my God, I mean, you know, that's where we're at. Mm. Where a mother's fear is her child being stopped by the police because of what the police could do. Welcome to well, the world what I of most would say like is Americans. Mum of three, yeah, exactly. And and what I would say, Mum of girls, is I get that, I understand it, we have anxiety about so much for our girls, but it still is a teeny, eeny, meeny, weeny, teeny minority of police. And actually, she's far safer in her car than waiting at the bus stop or doing any of that. Mm. So, so, so I understand that anxiety, but it is so minuscule that she would be stopped by the police and something bad with her. I mean, they might be rude to her, they might annoy her, but, but you know, j just, j it's good she's got a car. It's mm. good she's got a car. Uh, Tracy Lynham, my daughter's sperm donor abused her. I have a horrific photos of the damage she's done. My grandson almost foresaw far too much, almost for, so far too much. The two-year-old, thankfully, hasn't been affected. Police, hmm, no comment. Don't trust the police to call them, Claire Smiley. Oh, God. Uh, Natasha Milchin, we've been scared of the police in Russia for years, sadly. Oh, sweetheart, um, how are you out there? Yeah. Well, this is it, but, you know, there's many, I mean, there's many countries I've been in where we've been stopped by the police and I've been absolutely terrified knowing that absolutely anything could happen because mm. there's a, because of corruption and lawlessness. And you know, what, how sad is that, mm. that we are moving a bit towards that with the Metropolitan Police? It's absolutely. Just, and I feel really sorry for all the fantastic police. Yeah. I mean, we had a really bad experience with two police that came to our house. We won't go into the details of it, but... We were, it was horrible. But Shocking. actually, but actually the policeman that I spoke to when I rang was wonderful. He yeah. was avuncular. He was disgusted and horrified by what had happened. He said that absolutely can't. And then we got two like mm. horrible policemen that came. Mm. Um, so I like to focus on the good policemen that I spoke to. And yeah, I mean, we must never forget they run towards danger as we run away and the majority of them are there for the right reasons, but that doesn't help us when we know absolutely. that there are a minority. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Sarah Clift, I have, and we'll be discussing it on the weekly rushes uh, this week. I, um, think, I think today, just I, like when Mark said to me it was Sarah at the anniversary, I was just thinking of her family. Oh, I know, I know. Those beautiful impact uh, witness... Uh, um, victim impact statements that they wrote out in the court. Do you remember the dad mm. and the mum? Mm. Oh, my God. Melanie Williams, his other police colleagues called him the rapist. Yeah, I remember that. Mm. Uh, what's been done about that police department? Exactly. Um, I, I'm so glad Cressida Dick's gone. I'm so glad. Yeah, yeah. I think she was just... She just protected way too much. Yeah. Way too much. Faith Goodman, imagine being, imagine being stuck in a wheelchair as a lone woman. I feel vulnerable from everyone, not just men. Robbery and assault are oh, common sweetheart. for disabled people. Christ. Oh, sweetie. Yeah, of course. Mm. Of course. Uh, Dawn Clarico, sadly, a lot of police have a real attitude. My husband got pulled over for a minor driving incident. The way they spoke to him was appalling. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Natasha says she's hanging in there, Nadia. Thank you for asking in Russia. Yeah, in Russia. God. Children are being arrested. Can you believe that? For um, I don't laying know flowers. I, I, really? Yeah. Well, they're threatening 15 years, 15 years in prison for any kind of dissent. No, no, there's 15 years in prison if you 
broadcast anything that's critical of the establishment. Oh, not if you're out in the streets. No, because they've closed down the one and only remaining, I believe it's a radio station that in some way There are thousands that have been arrested, aren't they? Just a, little, just a little thing of something kind of sad and lovely at the same time. There was a story last night I saw online and um, it was a young Russian soldier who was crying his eyes out mm. with the Ukrainian mothers Sorry, it's going to get me. Giving him food and hot tea, and then she hands him her phone so he can call his mum. Mm. And you just think, oh, it's what I was saying only swimming the other day, you know, if only the Russian mothers could rise up and say, can we please have our bloody well, sons the Ukraine, back? Well, the Ukrainian... The U Most of them don't Ukrainians, even know why they're there. The Ukrainians, when they take prisoners, there was a, a story I saw yesterday where a number of uh, Russian um, soldiers who've been taken prisoner uh, or captured, the Ukrainians have said, uh, call your mothers. We call all of these, if you, if you want your son back safely, come and get your child. You know, the idea being they're trying to corral uh, and generate a sense of anti-war sentiment from the mothers of these, these boys who've been sent into war. So. And I think it's really important to keep our sense of humanity, because mm. there's, there's inhumanity going on, is to, and we touched a bit on this on Loose Women yesterday, is to think about those Russian soldiers, mm. because of course there are going to be elite forces, there's going to be brutal soldiers within that force, mm. but a lot of them are young boys mm. that don't know why they're there. And I'm thinking of their mums. Yeah, yeah. No, Imagine no. you've brought up your boy to be kind or sweet or whatever, and you've suddenly said you've got to go and kill these people. Imagine and an apparently army. a lot of them are getting there and saying they can't. Yeah, yeah. I mean, imagine an army of mothers heading down. I mean, Putin wouldn't give a damn, would he? Because, yeah. Jackie Valino, you're absolutely right. You can't tar all policemen with the same brush. I think Nadia kind of reiterated Yeah, absolutely. That. Yeah. Well, the majority the are majority good and are good. the right. I mean, incredibly yeah. brave, and I wouldn't do that job for anything. Um... So it's it's Eating Disorder Week as well, or Eating Disorder Awareness Week, isn't yeah. it? Um, and we've just recorded a How to Stay Married about that, actually. This one well, broke my heart <laughs> talking about it. You well, really we talked we talk, you know, very honestly about it. Um, and how important is it to have eating, eating disorder awareness? Well, do you know week, what? Just listening to you on that podcast, it's going to be put up on here as well. Just hearing you, because because my sort of more my thrust of it was as well that we both talked about our disordered eating, but I do think I never hear anyone of Mark's sex and age talking about it, and the fact that we know the extremes, anorexia and bulimia, but there's a whole lot of disordered eating in the middle that I know a lot of you um, deal with on a daily basis, yeah. and. I know that on the times that we've spoken about, just with our little community, people have reached out to us and said, oh, God, I've had a light bulb moment here. or I've yeah. had... And that's, 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 that's amazing, isn't it? So if you've got a whole week of it with all the different platforms talking about it and people that might be in complete denial, like I was in denial my whole life, that mm. I was body dysmorphic, it's, it's important. It's yeah. really important. Yeah, um, and it's important not to make presumptions of people, you know, based on appearance as well. Do you know what I mean? We, were talk, we talk about uh, exactly o Overeaters Tracy. Anonymous, and I think there's this... You can have profound a profound eating disorder, and they, it can present in no obvious fashion. Yeah, exactly. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. And I think, And I think, you know, it's weird. It's, it's like, whereas alcohol is the only drug you have to apologise for not, not doing... Uh, food is the only drug or, that you're or that, yeah, well, and also well, you that you to, have to you have. You can't die, you'd die yeah, yeah, yeah. if you didn't. Yeah. But I get very, 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 I'm very, I get very angry with the whole eat less, move more brigade. Mm. I shouldn't get angry, it's because they just don't know that it's so much more complex than that, but it is so much more complex mm. than that. And um, I think we go into depth with that, don't we, with this mm. podcast? As I say, it's also videos will be uploaded here. Yeah. Um, Faith Goodman saw on NHS page that cutting out a food group was really bad, uh, like Atkins that I did and lost weight, but now realise not healthy at all. I hate all those yeah. diets that get you to cut something out. Yeah. I mean, we don't promote any diets or anything, but what we always do is just share how we're working on our stuff with it. And we both do the 16-8 and that works for us. Mm. It just works for us. Yeah. It doesn't cost anybody anything. It's not a diet that somebody's making money out of. It just works for us. And it was funny because my friend Kaz, you know, who works with, uh, she works in an obesity clinic. She was saying to me, 
I know she doesn't approve of me doing it. Mm. And I said, but that's what works for me. I eat at 10, I have my first my breakfast at 10, I finish at 6. She went, yeah, but you've given it a name. Right. And I said, I get that, but I need a name. It's like people need to approach it in very different ways, don't yeah, they? Yeah. And I think this one size fits all of eat less and move more and all of this, it just, it just doesn't work for no. so many people. No. Cindy Thornley, I've suffered with eating disorders all my life and I'm now going through a relapse of anorexia. Oh, I think sweetheart. it needs to be out there. Any diet culture stuff is wrong. Well, we talk on our podcast about Overeaters Anonymous and just, just a couple of lines on that. Overeaters Anonymous is, should be renamed disordered eating because mm. it puts people off. Because it sounds really uncool and it's like, and if you say you're anorexic or you're the other way, you think, well, I don't overeat, I don't eat enough. It's not that. Every kind of person that has disordered eating, you will find in Overeaters Anonymous. Mm. And they're, it's just like AA, it's free, they're right across the globe. You can join them online, you can go into the meetings um, and they really made a difference to, for me. They, don't, don't you think? Yeah, they made no, a no, massive difference. Yeah, absolutely. Massive, massive difference for yeah. me. I went for a number of years. I'm actually going to plug into them again for a couple of... I'm going to go to a couple more groups and just, just to re-plug, because it's quite good too. Mm. Um, Kirsty yeah. Jane, we're all the same. Don't judge people for being underweight or overweight because that can knock people's confidence just down. Think, just don't judge anyone just don't for judge anything, anyone. I think. No. Be open to the fact that people struggle in different ways. Yeah. I mean, recently at Hi, work, Nanny Di. Hi, Mom. Somebody came up to me that it looks like the most sorted, organised on top of everything person and what they shared with me just blew my mind mm. because I wouldn't have known anything about what, what they'd shared with me. So you, we don't know what people's private hell is. We just mm. don't know, do we? Exactly. Uh, uh, Sarah Palmer. Yes, Overeaters Anonymous, Anonymous, Sarah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, OA and, for short. Angie Bayless, Harrison Mundy, I have real eating issues driven by childhood abuse, but with Slimming World, I'm learning to control it more. What I would suggest, Angela, what I would suggest is it's not really about controlling food because I find when you go on a diet and you're controlling food, you come off that diet, the control control goes out of the window and then often you can go to chaotic eating. So, you know, by all means do Slimming World, but if you could really, really have a look into why you overeat, What's going on for you emotionally when you overeat or you undereat or whatever you do? Uh, we talk about me nearly going into a binge last night, didn't we, on our mm, podcast? Mm. And and I've found I've through the help of OA and lots of conversation with all sorts of people and lots of years of looking into this, I've now found the things that I need to do to stop that that sort of out control overeating. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is really... But I do think just diets themselves are just dealing with the fact I need to control my eating and eat less and it's not really dealing with what's going on underneath that's mm. making you overeat it's only me really important point here i think with anorexia people have mainly come to understand you can't just try and force them to eat mm. with morbidly obese people they still say eat less be less lazy without delving oh, into the root hate causes that. i hate that yeah yeah i really oh it makes me so i've been having this argument for 20 years on Loose Women, mm. I tell you. Mm. And there's still some people I'm trying to bring around to it. They've got better. Yeah. <laughs> Lisa Roberts, I'm a comfort eater, obviously put a bit on in lockdown, but when I was approached and asked if I was pregnant, it knocked my confidence and made me feel crap. Me years ago. I then just comfort ate even more. I had somebody run, or who'd recognised me from the telly, run all the way across, it was at Gatwick Airport, from one luggage turnstile to me, screaming, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. She flung her arms around me, obviously away pre-pandemic, and said, you're pregnant. I didn't see that anywhere, and I was not. Oh, dear. I was not pregnant. Yeah. And everyone went, oh, no, it's for the telly. Oh, she's pregnant. Like, no, 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 I'm, I'm not pregnant. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Um, who has, uh, just moving off that topic now, who has restless leg syndrome? And then we'll move on to Kanye. Um, I get restless legs, and I didn't realise it's potentially to do with iron. Um, is it? Yeah. I know it's one of the, another one of the hundred symptoms yeah. of, uh, of menopause is restless legs. Yeah, does anyone get restless leg? Apparently it's much more common than oh, you yeah, think. Oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, it really is. And, and, it, and you when I've had think, it, it's, oh, yeah, it's really awful. But, but people literally can't sleep. Who, has anybody here got restless legs? We said, we said, 
one of our lot will have restless legs. Now look, you see what you should be doing, do you? Yeah, you should have done that stretch, stretch with me last limbs. night. Yeah. When I, 11 o'clock last night, I was on my yoga mat doing a stretch. I said, do you want to stretch with me? No. Uh, Melanie Williams, isn't it also to do with magnesium? You're right. Stretching your limbs is really important. It creates an overriding urge to move around uh, and can interrupt sleep, restless leg syndrome. Um, but it's uh, if your legs twitch or ache or itch, I didn't realise itching oh, is also a symptom of restless leg syndrome. Um, but they say the NHS is saying that it may be genetic. And there's evidence that it's related to levels of dopamine uh, that helps to control movement. Uh, dopamine levels naturally drop during the evening, which is when RLS symptoms are worse. And that's true. When I go to bed sometimes, I mean, I've had it on, on occasions where it's so unbearable. Yeah, got... <laughs> yeah I mean, it's just <laughs> awful. Um, and you're right, Catherine Klaus, and I think magnesium is part of it, but also checking your iron levels. It's sometimes associated with an underactive thyroid or oh. diabetes. Oh. Yeah, iron so it should never be... be problematic. See, the thing is, you know when people say, oh, they suddenly got this and there was no sign of it and then yeah. they suddenly got this, your body always tells you something. Mm. It, it does. We just ignore the little niggles, don't we? And finally, in terms of another treatment, you may need iron tablets, but they also recommend that you should eat red meat, leafy greens, dried fruit, beans and peas. But Which is the same advice for absolutely, absolutely anything. Absolutely everything. Uh, but last year, research from China uh, discovered that acupuncture uh, really helped as an effective treatment for, rest, for a restless leg syndrome. Oh, look, that proves what you said. Karen T, my daughter had it when she was anemic on iron tablets. Gone and it's now. gone. Well, there you go. And but somebody else said a... they cured theirs with coming off caffeine. Oh, really? Oh, right, yeah. You, I guess, you know, constant twitching is, is it. Um, Catherine Clausen, yeah, I have Parkinson's and low dopamine, but magnesium fixed it. Mm. Maudie May, I itch terribly at night. Thank you for the information. Yeah, I never knew that. I mean, I sometimes would get the itchiest, itchiest legs. Um, what's happened to Nanny Dye? Why are people saying, sorry, I've just noticed people are saying, so, Hi, I Nanny need a Dye. good film for waiting, looking forward to Batman for ages. Oh, Nanny Dye. Feeling a bit down, are you, Mum? I'm, I'm presuming you're saying. Uh, oh, look, everyone sends their love, Mum. Oh, what's the matter? Yeah, having a bad week. Oh, so, well, I'll give you a call afterwards, Mum. Uh, yeah, well, I'll have a nap. Do you know what, Nanny Dye? It's I don't been a difficult totally week. You. It, I, I, I understand yeah. his latest. Awful well, I think sound. you should say. Well, like you, you brought the story. I get too impassioned. So Kanye West has posted a cartoon. Is it on Instagram? Well, it's his new video. Yeah. So that will have gone to all his social media platforms. And the reason I knew that he posted this video, you know, Sean King, who I absolutely love, and I always tell all of you to follow him because he's fantastic. Um, God, he's got three point seven million followers now. And he's a civil rights fighter out in America. Very balanced. He, he's very, very balanced. I said to him yesterday, I go to you for the truth on everything. He gave me huge education on the whole Black Lives Matter and da-da-da. And he is, he has been, he sticks up for everybody. That's what I love about mm. him. And he's very, very angry about, he feels that Kanye manipulates um, the audience very much by, and, and, and therefore, no, the way that he manipulates Kim, he's also manipulating the audience. Right. And he sees the way that Kanye is treating Kim is very much in the way that a domestic violent person does, in his right. opinion. Right. And he's had so many women approaching him and saying, what Kanye is doing is what happened to me. Right. So that they've so split abuse, up. So abuse through stealth. and Yeah. Yeah. So, obviously, Kim and him have split up. He has a girlfriend. Kanye's got a new one now that he dresses up to look like Kim the whole time. Right. Um, and he has, time and time again, posted um, really incendiary, I would say. Is that the right word? Yeah, I mean, can we just stress, someone just said he's mentally... He is struggling right. with his mental he's health, He's struggling with sure. his mental health and not taking his medication. But there comes a point where mental health tips into uh, abusive behavior and then you can only really deal with the behavior before you deal with the illness yeah. because the behavior is affecting someone else. So, yeah. you know, we've talked a lot about having compassion as did Kim. Oh Kardashian, my God, we've, having... we have all the way along the line been very compassionate to Kanye and to Kim, but I think this has tipped over now. Mm. And if you watch the video, that he has posted today, and Sean he King says, him, he? Sean King says this is too far now, and that he needs to be removed from social media channels. He has written a song, and done an animated video where it's clearly Pete Davidson, 
and it's it's a moving image and Pete Davidson being decapitated and Kanye's holding his head under his arm. It's absolutely horrific. Yeah. It's it's inciting violence. Well, and, and also Davidson's his lyrics say, God save me from the crash just so I can pick beat Pete Davidson's, I guess, ass. Yeah, and, and um, Sean King again says that Kanye, um, Kim has had to double to security. Her, her family, her friends have had horrific um, rape and violent, rape and violent threats. threats. And it's just escalated beyond all reason. And, and Sean King says, Kanye will not remove these things, one. Then he will gaslight a non-apology. Then do something pro-black then say something overtly Christian, then he'll say something very smart or witty, then he'll do something dangerous again, then he'll repeat the cycle. And he's really coming from the angle, if we go back again to the um, to the Sarah Everard, that this is a form of domestic violence mm. by, by, by keeping Kim under threat and her new fella under threat. I mean, that's horrible. But you can also sense within that rhythm that Sean King describes, the five points, There's yeah. also that's also running in tandem to, it's bipolar in its structure, Yeah, isn't it? There's a sort of yeah. high of kind of sorting it and then there's a low of, um, of, of destroying it. So and I think at some point you have to be responsible for your, if you choose not to have medication and you, you know you're hurting people and frightening people, then that has to be challenged. I mean, you know, I believe that alcoholism is a disease. People don't. A lot of people mm. think that's just people that... Now, so if somebody in an alcoholic state does something frightening or scary to their to their partner, I don't think, right, that person was just in their alcoholic state. I think, no, that has to be addressed mm. because there are people that are suffering on the end of this. If Mark wasn't taking his bipolar medication mm. and he was chaotic or treating me badly, he doesn't and he does take his medication, then I would have to separate those two things. Mm. And But to move away from Kanye, I think the point that Sean is always trying to make here, that there are millions of women who put up with this post-breakup control. And I just wonder, and I think the last time we touched on this, so many of you reached out to us and mm -hmm. said mm -hmm. that they'd had that. That's what prompted that podcast that yeah, we did yeah, on yeah. coercive yeah, control. Yeah, yeah. And I just wonder, is there enough done to protect people mm -hmm. with post-breakup control? I and is there enough done for people that are, that are, un that are, that are being impacted by somebody that they loved who isn't looking after themselves mm. in the way that they need to? I, I think the answer is no. Uh, and a classic line, Reese, you remind us, is that at the end he says, just joking, which is a which way is of kind of... Which is not okay. If you okay. see that film, you will literally Is it on Instagram? Horrifying. Yeah, I think it's on Isn't Instagram. Isn't it amazing and that on Instagram YouTube. haven't taken it down? Well, well, Sean King thinks that this is citing such violence. Mm. And I've looked sometimes under Kanye's posts and it's one after another of somebody saying, I'll go and get him, just tell me when, Kanye. Just tell me when, I'll get him, I'll do him. I'll... And it's like, no. Yeah. I mean, if one of you watches that film and thinks that that's okay, I'll be so shocked. That's true, actually. Someone said he's trolling. <laughs> well, of course. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, you know, she has moved on. She, and he has, he has a girlfriend. Mm. But he wants that full control. And I mean, you remember on Valentine's, we were talking about it, weren't we? And he sent that huge truck of roses. Mm. Interestingly, the end shot of the video is Pete Davidson's head with all the roses coming out of his head. And we all know that Kanye has always mm. lavished roses upon Kim Kardashian. Mm. And I worry that because he's very wealthy and, because, and, and Sean King says, he thinks he would have been arrested by now if he wasn't. It, it, and because he's very wealthy and because he's a celebrity, he's he's getting away with this mm. in the, under the name in the name of art. Mm. And I would like to reiterate again, we have spoken so much about our support for what they've gone through, and I've yeah, yeah. hated TMC TMZ when they've shown films of him when he's obviously in a high bolus high bolus high bolus high bolus state and saying terrible things. Mm. Um, but I think this has crossed a line now and people's lives are in...
The Dark Danger. Knight Detectorist Hunting History, it's an interesting name, alcohol bring, can bring out a true person's nature as does not taking the medication. I don't necessarily agree with I that. I don't agree because, no. yeah, I've said things think, before when I'm pissed that I definitely didn't mean or yeah, ever yeah. think. Yeah, absolutely. I think alcohol leads to self-sabotage, which can lead to bad behaviour, don't get me wrong. Alcohol can lead to bad behaviour, bad behavior, but it, yeah. it's a bit of a cliche, this idea that it reveals the real person. I think the real person surely is more the person who isn't drunk and affected by a drug. Yeah. Surely. Well, like, or, if you or, think or about the really terrible time when I was really, really drunk, I thought we all know the time mm. because it was really embarrassing. Um, but, and I said the most terrible things. I didn't mean any of those things. Yes, exactly. But I was really upset about other things. Yeah. And then alcohol term. And you, when you used to get drunk and you were just horrible. Yeah. That wasn't you. No. I've never seen that horrible person with you sober. Exactly, exactly. So I don't think I don't think that's true. Um, I just want to say, Reese, yeah, absolutely. I wanted to watch it, but you didn't seem too keen. The Kanye documentary series on Netflix called Genius. Oh no, I do want People to watch it. People are saying it. it's very interesting. I started to watch it. It was a bit boring at the beginning. It was like, Fair come on, on, get on with it. But I, I wasn't in the right frame of mind. Okay, so we're just gonna sing Moira a but happy birthday, because we promised you. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Moira, Moira, Moira. Happy birthday to you. Um, guys, have a good day. It's okay if you want to avoid the Ukrainian Russia news for a day or, or whatever. You can turn away without Could somehow you, disrespecting. Don't you, there's no point making yourself ill. Mm -hmm. Don't If you're a bit in that vibe now where you're checking it every two minutes, be careful with that. The big advice is to maybe look at one piece of print journalism a day to keep up on what's going on, but to yeah. watch the rolling news. Yeah, absolutely. Not good. Okay, guys, stay safe. And the How to Stay Married will be landing very, very soon. And check out the podcast we were talking about that we did today on um, eating disorders. Yeah, absolutely. That's How to Stay Married, isn't it, that's yeah. landing today. Yeah. Okay, bye.